Hello and welcome to our channel, Cheating Exposed. Today, we're revealing another story to uncover the truth behind the lies. So, let's get started. I, 26 female, had an affair with a married man, 42 male, a few years ago. I had no clue he was married when we first met and hooked up. I looked him up on social media and while he did have photos of his kids, there was absolutely no mention or photos of a wife at all. I found out that he was married about a month after we first got together, but he told me it was just a marriage on paper and that they basically lived separate lives, agreeing to remain married for practical purposes until the kids were older. They owned a business, which he really ran, and he was just financially involved. I knew at the time that I probably shouldn't believe him, but I convinced myself it was true. I was in my early twenties, so attracted to him, and I guess almost infatuated with him. He made me feel so good. I know now that I should have ended it immediately, but I didn't realize what I was getting myself into. I was addicted to all of the attention he gave me, the great connection, the places he'd take me. I felt special. I was so naive. I got pregnant about a year into seeing him. I had always been careful with preventing pregnancy, but during my relationship with him, I took risks. I was so high in attraction to this guy, it's embarrassing. The things he'd asked me to do. I'd say yes to almost anything, even when I knew it was a bad idea. I was in love with him, or I thought I was. I hadn't intentionally wanted to get pregnant. Of course, I would dream about being his wife and having a family, but I knew that wouldn't be a possibility while he had this arrangement with his actual wife. I didn't get pregnant on purpose, with any intention of him leaving her for me, even if I wished that we could be a real, normal couple. I was surprised by how excited I was to be pregnant with his baby. I wanted that baby once I found out. The thought of carrying his child was so special to me, but I knew he probably wouldn't feel the same. I told him I was pregnant, and he told me I couldn't keep the baby. I expected his reaction, but I was devastated, and it hurt me to my core that he didn't feel the same way. He offered to pay, to make a whole weekend of it somewhere exciting, and to buy me something special if I'd just please end the pregnancy. He explained that he didn't want any more kids, and that he couldn't openly be a father to another child when he and his wife were still pretending to be happily married to the outside world. I agreed to do what he wanted, and we made plans for him to pick me up and find somewhere out of town to get it done. I was all packed the night he was going to pick me up, but I started to feel really scared and unsafe about the whole thing. I took my bag and checked myself into a hotel to hide because I couldn't go with him. I texted him, promising to never contact him again, never name him as the father, or go after child support if he'd promised to leave me alone. At first, he tried to sweet-talk me into doing what he wanted. When I didn't cave in, he said some very nasty things to me and warned me to never contact him again or show up at his door. I have a two-year-old now. At times, it's been difficult, but overall, we are thriving as best we can. I have kept my word about not naming him as the father or requesting child support. His wife contacted me on social media. Well, she's his ex-wife now. She wants to talk to me. She found out about me and told me that she divorced him six months ago. She wants her children to know their sibling and for my child to know his siblings. That's strange to me. I haven't responded back to her yet. I am unsure about how to approach this. How do I respond to this? I wonder if I'm being selfish by not exploring an option for my child to know his siblings if she's being genuine about that. If I were married and my husband fathered a child outside of our marriage, I don't think I'd feel the same as she does. Update. I made a post three weeks ago, and things have only gotten stranger. I had an affair with a married man a few years ago. I regret it and will never do anything like that again. I knew it was wrong from the very beginning, but he captivated me. I was naive. I allowed myself to believe him when he told me they were pretty much just married on paper for the sake of their kids. I got pregnant, and while he tried to talk me into ending the pregnancy, I ultimately decided to keep the baby. I have a two-year-old little boy now. 
I promised this man that I wouldn't expose our affair and wouldn't formally identify him as the father or request child support. I did that because he was becoming very unpleasant about the whole thing, and I felt like due to the mess I had created and the way I felt by the end of it, a clean break with no involvement from him would be best for everyone. I moved back to where my family is, hundreds of miles from where he and his family live. About a month ago, his ex-wife reached out to me via social media, claiming they had been divorced for six months and that she wanted our children to be able to know each other. Now, their kids are teenagers, so I didn't really think they'd want anything to do with the toddler or the woman their father was involved with. It seemed odd to me. After posting here, I sort of decided that I wouldn't respond to her. I'd just ignore it. She just sent me the one message, so it wasn't as if she was badgering me about talking to me or meeting me. On Friday night, I decided to message her. I don't really know why. I think it was really just for my sake so I could have the chance to apologize to her. I told her that I would be more comfortable speaking with her face to face since I couldn't trust that it was really her. She said she understood. I was too nervous to meet her in person, but we did a video chat. I didn't know what to expect, if this was all a ploy just to unleash her fury on me or what. I mean, I deserve that. She wouldn't be wrong to feel that way. It was really her. She told me she discovered our affair when she found messages between us after our relationship had ended. She shared that I'm just one of many women he had affairs with over the years and that she even knew about someone before he met me but chose not to divorce him back then. Learning about my child was the final straw for her. I apologized for being involved with her husband and admitted that I knew he was married. She responded graciously, saying she forgives me. Although she initially harbored a lot of anger toward me, she ultimately blames her husband. I'm not blameless, but she chooses not to hate me. She said she wouldn't have been able to say this six months ago or a year ago when she first found out about me, but now she's moved past it. She still has anger toward him, along with many other complicated feelings about their relationship. She started sharing deeply about their 20-plus years of marriage, which felt very awkward for me. What was I even supposed to say? Her kids know about me and my son. She said they're very angry with their father. Somehow, I doubt it's because he's not involved with my son's life. I would hate me if I were them. I told her that, with my son being so young, I don't feel comfortable having him meet her kids or becoming involved with their family. I'm just not ready for that, and it doesn't feel necessary right now. Then she told me her ex-husband had a serious accident two months ago. He's recovering and isn't allowed back to his normal routine just yet, but he will be okay. He's probably the most active person I've ever met, he never sits still. He must be incredibly difficult to be around if he's unable to go-go-go all the time. She said he wants to meet my son. Apparently, she moved back in temporarily to help him after he came home from the hospital. She said the accident really shook him up, and he's been expressing regret about not being part of my son's life and not providing for him. So now I'm wondering, was everything she told me just a lie? Did he somehow convince her to reach out to me on his behalf? And she actually went along with it? I initially felt relieved talking to her, but now it's like, was any of that real, or was she just trying to be his messenger? I can't even be sure that part was true. Why wouldn't he just contact me himself? I have not been in contact with her since then. I deleted my social media. I don't know why, but the whole thing just made me uncomfortable. Second update. Then I received a handwritten letter from him. In it, he expressed how he wanted to get to know our son, he wants to be a father to him, and he wants to provide financially for him. He invited us to visit him and asked me to sign a paternity affidavit. I refused to do so. I know he is my son's father, but I'm not going to make this that easy for him. After everything he said to me and the threats he made, he at least has to work for this. At that point, my parents felt that we needed to meet with a lawyer. All communication from me has gone through a lawyer. I have never responded to him personally or directly. Now, I have a court order for paternity. I have to present my son to have a specimen taken tomorrow. I already know what it's going to say. 
It's not that I don't want my son to have a dad in his life. It's just that the whole situation is a mess. He lives a few states away from me, and I don't know what to do. I can't really do anything. He's doing things legally. Next, I'm sure he'll petition for some form of custody or visitation. He's not married anymore, supposedly, but he's a lot more established than I am. He has considerably more financial resources. I also know he has all sorts of connections where he lives. Luckily, they don't hold as much weight here in my state, but it's still so scary to me. I feel like a bad mom. I brought my son into this world knowing it was a messy situation. I just got so comfortable with it being just the two of us, and now I don't want to give that up. I haven't talked to him at all during this whole situation. I didn't respond directly to his letter. I do have a lawyer, and everything is basically going through him now. Then, without any warning, he just showed up at my home last weekend. He knocked on the door like it was nothing. Basically, this is his son, and he doesn't want to wait another six weeks for the court to inevitably order us into some sort of custody mediation anyway, his words. Why can't I just talk to him? I told him he made me uncomfortable, and him just showing up at my house really heightened that discomfort. Honestly, I don't know what made me so uneasy, the fact that he showed up unannounced like that or the fact that I instantly felt the same attraction to him that I had when I was with him, and I didn't want to feel that at all. In some weird way, part of me felt happy to see him, and then another part of me was disgusted that I felt happy. He said he doesn't understand why we can't just talk about this. He's not trying to take my son away from me, he just wants to be involved in his life and to help provide for him like he should have been all along. He's sorry he wasn't there when our son was born. He's sorry he reacted the way he did when I didn't go along with his plans to take me on an abortion vacation. Why can't I believe that he just wants to be a dad to his child? I guess I agree with him. Why can't I just accept that he has had a change of heart? I can't trust myself. I can't trust my own judgment. I feel like if I easily let him into my son's life, I'm going to end up regretting it and be made a fool of somehow. I've already made so many mistakes when it comes to him. He says it's stupid of me not to try to work it out amongst ourselves first. I'm giving so much control to the court. I don't know whether to believe that or think it's just his way of convincing me to do what he wants. I know he will get some form of visitation and eventual custody. Maybe it would be better if we tried to come to an agreement, but he has the ability to sway me so easily. I'm so foolish when it comes to him. Nobody else has ever made me feel so foolish in my life. I want my son to have a dad. I admit it's probably selfish of me to want to keep him away. I just keep imagining having to spend weeks or months apart from my child while he's living with his dad 12 hours away, and I can't stand the thought of it. I'm just feeling sad, foolish, and defeated. Final update. All I will say is that I have a three-year-old son who was conceived during an affair I had with a married man. After initially making me promise not to contact him, not to name him as the father, and not to request child support, my child's father has been pursuing involvement in our son's life over the last several months. He lives states away, and most recently, he showed up at my house to try to convince me to work things out directly with him. Since the last time I posted, we've had a mediation session, and he's met our son twice. At this time, he will have supervised visitation, with me present. Because he lives states away, he is required to come here to see our son. It will not be on a weekly basis due to the travel. He will see him during two weeks of the month, two times each week, for a total of four visits a month plus two video calls a month. This will last for six months. The next step will be for him to continue that schedule but to have unsupervised visitation during which he cannot remove him from the area for another six months. After a year, we agreed to have another mediation session to determine next steps, with the goal, his goal, of having my son at his home for short overnights. I'm not even ready to discuss that. He's already suggesting I can come for the first few times, but I don't like the sound of it at all. We also have the option to request another mediation before the year is up, and something tells me he's going to pull that. I also have an order for child support. 
While he agrees to pay it, it will have to work through the court system before becoming official and for me to start receiving regular payments. He wrote me a large check in the meantime. I was hesitant to accept it. Not that I don't think my son deserves it, but I'm always worried I'll say or do the wrong thing legally, completely unknowingly, and shoot myself in the foot. Like, am I obligating myself and my son to anything by accepting this check? Can he somehow spin this against me? Of course, he was not in favour of the six-month plan. While he understands that my son should not just go off with a stranger upon first meeting him, he wishes we could speed things along a little more. But six months was what we were able to agree on. He wanted to fly us both to where he lives so he could spend a week or two getting to know our son, but I don't feel that's appropriate at this time. Perhaps in a few months, or around the holidays, depending on how things are going. It would be too much too soon. The initial two meetings went pretty much just as I thought they would. My son is extremely shy and wanted to hide behind me most of the time. When he would venture out from behind me, as soon as his dad would say anything to him, he would scurry back and just stare at his dad blankly without saying anything. He came out of his shell a little bit, but he has still not said a single word to his dad. He just pretends like his dad isn't there and only talks to me. I will say that his dad is being patient and understanding about that. If he's frustrated, he's not showing it. He did suggest that maybe our son needs to get out more, go to daycare more, or even preschool instead of spending so much time with me and my parents. He's very delighted with how much our son looks like him and how much he favours him over me. The one thing that did bother me is that I already told him I wanted to be very careful and mindful of how we informed our son, this little barely three-year-old boy, that this man, complete stranger, is his dad. He said, sure, yeah. Then at the first meeting, he introduced himself as dad. Since then, I've been trying to help my son understand. Like, you know how your grandpa is my daddy, this guy is your daddy. It's so surreal to me that any of this is happening. I feel like I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. I'm waiting for something to blow up in my face. Now, it's just about accepting our new reality. All of this change is hard and confusing for my son, and it's hard for me too. Unless he really messes up, I'm looking at eventually shared times with my son spending school breaks and holidays at his dad's house, hours and hours away in another state. It won't happen tomorrow, but it will likely happen. I just hope he stays committed. If he can be a good dad to my child, then my child deserves that, no matter how sad sharing him makes me. If he breaks my son's heart, that'll be another story, and I won't accept that so readily. It's been three weeks since I last posted, and just over a month since our new visitation arrangement started. I've seen plenty of people here talking about how dumb I am. I don't really understand. What am I doing that's so dumb? I know it was dumb to have an ongoing, year-long affair with a married man. It was stupid to put myself in a position where I could likely end up pregnant. That was in the past. What am I doing now that's so stupid? I have a lawyer. Yes, I agreed to talk to his wife one time. How was I to know she was just doing his bidding? Who would have thought that was the case? It's not even like I went to meet her in person somewhere. It was just a video call. I figured I at least owed that to her, just one time and a chance to tell her I was sorry for what I did. But ultimately, it felt off, and I protected my son by telling her I didn't think it was appropriate at this time for me and my two-year-old to travel to another state to meet her teenage kids. It's not as if talking to her opened the door for him to reach out to me. I was careful with what info I shared with her. I didn't tell her my address. He didn't need her to gather that info from me. My talking to her isn't what prompted him to contact me directly and establish paternity. When he reached out to me about wanting to be involved with our son, I didn't reach out to him and decide to discuss things directly with him. I got a lawyer. When he showed up at my house, I didn't let him inside. I put my son in his room so he wouldn't eventually see him or have access to him. I'm listening to my lawyer. I met with him in mediation, and I am trying to make careful decisions for my son. There's nothing I can do to prevent him from having access to our son. 
The court will grant him access if I fight it. At least this way, I have a say in the arrangement. We are supposed to be using a parenting app. Since the last time I posted, he's reached out to me outside of the app. Now, he keeps talking about us coming there to visit him. I have told him no. It's not appropriate. It's too much too soon. He's already started talking about changing my son's last name to his, saying that maybe in a year or so. He tries to have personal conversations with me, not always about our son. I've shut those down and referred him back to the parenting app. He thinks using the app is stupid and is only for people who can't get along. He believes it'd be better for our son if we got along and got to know each other again. He cares about me and what's going on in my life, also he says. I also didn't cash the check he gave me. I returned it. If he wants to help financially beyond the child support is ordered to pay, he can purchase items that our son needs out of his own free will, but he isn't to give me cash or checks. My lawyer actually told me that there was nothing wrong with accepting and cashing the check, it wouldn't affect anything related to child support. But knowing him, he could be using this check as something he can bring up later in court, and I just didn't feel comfortable about it. Sure, I would have loved to have kept it. There are quite a few useful things I could have used that money for. Of course, he was upset when I returned the check via certified mail. His plan was foiled. I know he's trying to butter me up for something. I don't know precisely what, but I'm not so naive that I don't see through him now. Well, folks, that's all. Thank you all for listening. Please like, comment, and share the video if you enjoyed it. Also, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you will be notified when we upload the next video. Take care.